This is the second time I am exploring the suite in C minor by Jean-Nicolas Geoffroy, having recorded three of its movements several years ago. One of the reasons I decided to revisit it is that I have finally been able to collect copies of all of the movements and can present it complete. Another reason is that my way of playing it has changed quite a bit in the meantime, so that I felt it was necessary to re-record those three movements anyway, in addition to recording the rest of it. In this video, I will present the first four movements of the suite, which are Allemand la Confidante, Autre Allemand, in other words, a second Allemand, Courant, and Sarabande. I suspect that part of the difficulty with finding a lot of information about Geoffroy or scores of his music is that despite leaving behind the substantial body of repertory for the harpsichord, his music is not always seen in a positive light. There are a lot of unique, or as I like to call them, quirky elements in his compositions, including some quite daring harmonies that have led certain writers to say that he was simply not a very good composer. In other words, rather than appreciate the individuality of his musical language, those elements that make it so distinctive are seen as weaknesses of his compositional ability. While the situation seems to be gradually changing, there is still very little out there. The one manuscript containing all of his harpsichord music, which incidentally was not compiled by Geoffroy himself, is not available online, and what seems like the only complete modern edition of his works is quite expensive, although I am saving money and I plan to buy it sometime in the future. So the score I'm using is really a combination of some of the movements that are available in a free online edition and copies from the official modern edition of his works, which friends of mine graciously made for me. Now onto the performance. Of the four movements I will be presenting in this video, I had recorded two of them, namely the Allemand La Confidante and the Saravand, six years ago. Compared to those older recordings, while the Saravand is not particularly different, the Allemand certainly is. For one thing, I feel that the character of the piece is permeated by a sense of melancholy, and I now find my earlier performance a little too self-assured, more confident than confidant, if you will. So part of the difference in the new performance has to do with a slightly more relaxed, but also more flexible sense of rhythm that allows the music more breathing space. This more flexible approach also extends to another central aspect of performing French Baroque repertory in general, and this has to do with how one applies the concept of note inégal, meaning that some notes written with equal time values are performed using unequal durations, with the first of the two notes being longer than the second note. Now, before I address what I'm doing differently, let me briefly say a few words of caution. The subject of how to play not in a gal is a very complex one, and different performers have different ideas regarding how to apply this inequality. Certainly, historical sources can also add to the complexity in the sense that instead of offering clear-cut rules, they instead appeal to the performer's sense of good taste when it comes to how to play. So I want to stress that my approach simply reflects my understanding of this issue and I am not suggesting that what I'm doing is somehow right or correct. I think 
that the main reason historical sources tend to be unclear on this subject is because inequality must have been applied in a flexible way and also in different degrees depending on the piece so that notating it precisely was probably either almost impossible or would have made the score look extremely cumbersome and difficult to read. Imagine trying to notate precisely the intricate rhythmic details of, say, a Coltrane solo, and you get the idea. So when I listen to some of my earlier recordings, I find that in certain instances, my playing of Not in Egal is not as flexible and varied as I like it to be nowadays. And this particular album is a case in point. From a rhythmic standpoint, this Almond has a fairly persistent rhythmic figure consisting of two eighth notes and a quarter note, and I will demonstrate in a minute. And I think that if this figure is going to become an expressive gesture rather than a monotonous pattern, we need to play it with different degrees of inequality, ranging from a more obvious lengthening of the first note to a much more subtle effect that consists not so much of lengthening the first note in terms of its value, but rather holding it down longer than the second one and thus providing more of a dynamic sort of emphasis. Let me demonstrate what I mean. If I play this figure, and I'm just going to play the beginning only the right hand for a moment, uh, there is a certain or ornament that is applied here, but I'm going to leave it out for now. So if we look at this very strictly in terms of two eighth notes and one quarter note, we get something like this. So the question is, what can we do with this? If you play this passage, without any note in a gal, you can imagine it being something like this. And again, I'm leaving a certain ornament out for now. And I like how he ends on this. Again, he does little quirky things like that um, all the time. Now, this is, let's say, the one extreme, no inequality applied. The other extreme would be to do it in a fairly obvious way. So something like this, perhaps. And my first performance, the one from several years ago, was not that extreme, but still it's a little more than what I would like. So what do I do now? Well, I try to be more flexible and this kind of flexibility means that I can never really do it exactly the same way from performance to performance. But what I want you to notice is that when I play it now, I'm going to also use the ornamentation that's part of this passage. But what I want you to notice is that there is inequality, but it always changes a little bit. And obviously what you're going to hear right now reflects my mood tonight as I'm filming this. So what you will hear in the recording is probably going to be a little bit different compared to what you will hear right now. So here is how I feel like playing it tonight. <laughs> So in other words, I vary it. There were some moments where it was a little too obvious. In other moments, it was not obvious at all. And there were lots of in-between things. There were also times when I held the first note longer than the second note, rather than actually make a rhythmic inequality. So all of these things are going to be applied throughout this piece because this rhythmic figure persists throughout, so I vary it in all sorts of different ways. 
I follow the same flexible approach with the rest of the movements, but treat each of them differently depending on their character. So for the second Allemand, I continue to play in a generally softer or gentler version of Note in a Gal, as I find that its mood is similar to the first Allemand, even though in terms of writing, the two Allemands are quite different from each other. For the Courant, by contrast, I generally adopt a more obvious kind of Inegal, but I still vary the amount of it that I use throughout the piece. As for the Sarabande, I revert to a softer approach to emphasize the more contemplative character of the piece. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the performance.